Alright, hey guys, I just had a couple of games on uh, chess.com for upload, and I've been having some technical difficulties. If my, uh, if my game goes over 20 minutes on Cam Studio, then the file doesn't save and I have to use Camtasia. So thankfully, this site has actually got a really cool feature that it keeps a log of all the games I've played until I delete them. So fortunately, I'm able to go back through, load the game I just had, and I'll be able to go through it play by play. Um, obviously, this one, it's not going to be live, which I had really, really, really good narration for. But, um, you know, we're just this is the best I'm going to be able to do. So, um, I'm black, and he opens with queen pawn, which is, like, my favorite thing when they do, because I get to play my favorite defense, which is it's called King's Indian. Um, I'm not the type of player who's going to throw a bunch of notation out at your face, because it's really confusing, and it... You know, unless you're really, really good at chess, you just don't understand it. Same with a bunch of, like, the names of, like, oh, the blah, blah, blah defense and the super mega ultra old school attack. You know, I'm not going to throw crap out there like it's a Digimon or something. So, um, but I do know a couple of things, and this is my favorite defense. But then he followed it up with a really weird move, and I wasn't quite sure what the heck that was supposed to be. Um, so at this point, I'm already kind of thrown off a little bit. I'm thinking I want to move my queen pawn up. Um, I just feel like it's going to be strong at some point, but I know that with the first move that I have, that's not the way it's supposed to play out. So I just keep going with the same path, pushing up my fianchetto pawn, and he starts moving some other stuff instead of like attacking my horse like he's supposed to, like a normal person. And now I get even more concerned. I'm like, I really want to, you know, keep him away from these pieces, from these places. So I want to push my pawn up even there for the even more but i decide no i'm just going to stick with it i'm just going to keep going with what i need to do and i'm going to keep going with you know what i have at hand and he goes with another really weird move which i'm guessing it's just to block off my horse's two best spots to go um but it's a very very weak move as if he wants to castle on this side then it leaves the black file really really open for a queen to easily get in there or you know something it leaves the king's defense weakened for, you know, nothing essentially. So usually you don't want to touch the F or the C file. So that's just how it works. And at this point, I'm like, screw it. I've, you know, for three turns, I've thought this has been a good move. I feel like that's what I'm supposed to do at this point. So um, I just, otherwise, I, I didn't really know. Because like when people do weird crap that I'm not familiar with, I don't know how to respond. You know, it's like an original move set. Like, what do I predict? How am I supposed to react? So he starts moving some more stuff, and I'm just like, I suppose, you know, whatever, standard move, develop a piece, but it's not doing anything, so I just keep on going, same thing, bring out my pieces, and, uh, you know, just, like, that was really it, just start bringing out my own pieces as well, um, and now he's going up with this pawn to block my horse from going here, I wanted to put it here so that I could attack his bishop, you know, scare it away, do a bunch of, you know, nothing, really, I was, that was pretty much it, just make it move away was my, my biggest train of thought. So he blocked that, no big deal. Um, I would like to get my bishop out here somewhere, but because his is there, I can't do it. So now I'm thinking of a way that if I can put my horse here on the back file and then up to here, I can defend it with the pawn. And this is actually a very good place to have the horse in, in these middle eight squares. I suppose, hell, these middle 12 squares, they're, I suppose, actually a, to make it a true middle would be 16. But you know, in this section of the board, they're just, they're really annoying because they just get right in all of your defenses and messing everything up. It would totally it would attack this piece, this piece, and this piece and just mess up everything that he wanted to do. But I decide, you know what, according to the, you know, the strategy that this defense is supposed to do, I'm supposed to castle, so I'm going to do it early. I'm going to do it on time. Um, I'm also going to waste a turn. Sometimes when I play as black, I like to quote unquote waste a turn defensively just to make him do something else so I can know how to react better. So that was another process to it. And now he's just freeing up a castle, slightly developing a piece, and locking up his board, really, is all that is. And I proceed to go right into my horse action, and uh, he responds by moving this bishop, which I thought was great, because now I'm going to go here. It's going to give me a great opportunity to take this guy, mess up all your plan, make all your base belong to me, and uh, I'm going to keep going right with my strat and hope that he doesn't take. But he's not too stupid, he's just a little stupid, so he does go right up in there and take which is still an advantage to me. I do lose a little bit of position on the board by um, messing up my pawns and getting them doubled up. You always you want as best as you can to have them spread apart as opposed to all at the same time. I think in like the second battle, this one chick had three pawns in a row. I'm just like, how do you do that? That's the worst thing ever. 
Um, since pawns can only move forward and attack diagonally, the reason you don't want doubled up pawns like that is because one pawn can just sit here and block all of the pawns from moving or doing anything. So that's why you do that, or don't want that. Um, moves a horse. Don't really know what it's doing there. Um, I guess he's just trying to develop pieces. I, I, I don't really know. Um, and so that's going to lead me to go into my next move. Um, I wanted to find some way to defend this pawn while I was up there, and I wanted to get my bishop out on these files so I can start attacking um, his flank, but I just wasn't sure of like which how I wanted to proceed with doing it. Did I want to use this pawn first and then this one, but um, I always like to start using the pawn that I have doubled up because it's you know it by having them doubled it makes both of them weaker. So I want to try and use them and try and get rid of that as a disadvantage and see if I can just come out even with it. So I figure this will allow me to push here. The downside is that if I do want to fee and shadow my bishop and attack all up in his grill, this pawn is still here in the way. But uh, I needed to defend this square first because of his horse. So that was really the reasoning for that. Um, he attacks it with his queen, which is fine. I go up there and defend it. It looks really ugly, but it, it, it does what it needs to do. He castles queenside, which is very, very surprising to me. Um, I learned a long time ago that when somebody castles queenside and the other person castles kingside, essentially when they go opposite, first person to the king wins. So now I know it's just a blitz to his face and knock on his front door, barge into his castle, and show him, you know, castle crashers just go right up in his grill. So I know I need to get there, which is even more beneficial by the fact that I went king's Indian, so I have like a fortitude blockade going on and my queen side is empty that's why i love the king's indian because i'm nice and defensed while i still have a total empty flank on him so um it makes my doubled up ugly pawns a little bit better in the fact that it's just fodder it's ammunition so i start to blitz over there because i want to try and find some way to you know start pushing these pawns and get things weaker so i can get up up here in his grill and uh there's just, you know, I don't remember exactly every thought I had, but I wanted to use these bishops in ways, and uh, getting up here to attack this piece was kind of a big thing at the moment with that move. So he's going to try and block it, and this is a very interesting move. Um, originally, when chess was invented millions of years ago, your pawns could only move one square each time, no matter what turn it was. Later on, they figured, you know, this makes for a lot of super defensive games that are all clogged the hell up, and nobody can move anywhere, it takes too long. So on your pawn's first move, if it has not gone off its home row yet, you can put it up two squares, like this guy just did. He just moved it two. But should you move that second space in an effort to avoid the capability of being captured, if he was to move one, I could capture him before he moved his other one, I can actually just jump over him kind of like checkers and get up in here as if he had only moved one in the first place. But I can only do that on this turn. So I either do it now or I do it never. And I figured that's fine. It's going to mess up his pawns. I'll do it now. It kind of removes my doubled up pawns a little bit. It means that this guy was worth taking two pieces for. And uh, it's something he still has to respond to. So I take that. Don't know if he was aware of it or not. He runs back with his horse, which is to guard this piece. Because if he responds, then I just come up here with my queen. And then he is in an absolute world of hurt. So that was his uh, answer for that one. But unfortunately for him, it leaves me with just more fodder for my pawn. So he's just going to keep on rampage Jackson up in his face. And uh, it's going to force him to respond now. He has to take the pawn. I suppose he could go you know, here with his king and leave my pawn. No, he couldn't leave my pawn there because I take the rook. So he had to take that. That was his only move. And now he's really weak. He's got no pawn defense. His king is like, hi, I'm out here. You know, please shoot me. I'm sticking my head out from behind the wall. So now there's a lot of stuff I want to do. I want to bring my bishop out here and attack. But because he did this dumb, retarded, lucky move of moving his pawn up there, he can create a little mini chain. And I'm not going to be able to respond to it very effectively. So I know at some point I need to work my guys. I can't move him here and do like a two-step drop either. So I know eventually, though, like things are going to be looking good. I got rid of my doubled pawn because I like to use them when I have them. So his position is crap. Um, I move my horse here so I can get this horse out of here, which will help free up my bishop a little bit. And it's also going to get my queen off of this dark square where it can't do anything. I can't put the king in check there. I can't go here and get taken by the pawn or the bishop, and I can't take the pawn either. 
So when he accepts the trade, that's going to allow me to free myself up, and now I can really get in his grill just a little bit better. So he responds by moving his bishop, which again, I, I don't really know what it does. I guess it frees up his rook or something. I have no idea what he was really going for with that. Um, it's not like I was about to take that pawn. So, And then I decided to go, boom, blitz right up in his face and go for a really risky play. If he moves his king there, then bam, I just take his queen and I win the game. If he moves his king here, which is what I was expecting, then I can go with my original plan of bringing the bishop up here and seeing how is he going to respond. Like, he's only going to have two options to deal with that, and uh, not all of them are very good. So, um, But instead, he doesn't go here, which I expected, and he ends up just blocking me off immediately. I'm like, hmm, that was interesting. I didn't think about that at all. So now I know that my queen is up a little... A little in the risky space um it does still have its, its escape route though so that's very crucial um despite the fact that i can't take anything here it's just it's messy and offensive and clogging it up and uh it looks really bad but it's doing really good so i'm just going to keep putting on the pressure and putting my bishop here allows me to either move my queen here for some massive offense with it being defended or my original thought was i'll be able to put my bishop here on the c4 and being defended by the pawn, I can attack his queen, get this out of here, and then just start kind of, you know, raising hell. And he makes a very weird play, or at least it's weird to me. I understand his concept of bringing it down so he can defend this square, because he didn't want me bringing my queen down and messing up his face. But that just makes for a very, very weak move, having a bunch of straight-lined attackers and a diagonal that I can just come in there, take advantage of, and now he can't move his rook, he can't move his uh, bishop either, and if he does want to move his rook, I just take his queen. So that really, really sucks for him. So he's trying to counterattack by moving his horse to attack my queen in an attempt that, oh, if I just, you know, take this rook over here, he goes, oh, sneak, you lose. Although, in second, no, because that would put him in check. You know, I didn't see that before. If I do take this, it puts him in check. So he still would be forced to respond. Huh. I don't think that's better. I, yeah, I, it's not as good as what I did. So that's good that I didn't see it. Um, I went with, you know, plan B from several turns ago. Just go up here with it defended. It's going to force him out of the way and just make him run all over the place. And now I can still take um, his rook and still have my advantage. My queen is just in a better position. And, uh, you know, his king is off back where it should be. So... It just works out a little bit stronger that way. Um, bishops are not as good as rooks, so it, uh, it's a good trade for me. Despite the fact that I lose my bishop pair, which I spent a long time you know, talking about in the match, and I'm not going to be able to afford that time now, it's too bad. Um, it's an absolutely beneficial trade that you need to do every time you can. Well, I shouldn't say that. There's nothing so exclusive like that in chess where it has to happen every single time. Chess is a funny game like that. So now I respond with... You know, I've got the major advantage. I need to start wreaking havoc and making something happen. So pushing this here is going to give me a couple options of I could move this pawn and make it look like there's a couple of free pieces. But if I move this, then this pawn is free from his horse and I can take his queen. Or if he wants to take it with his pawn, then his queen is free as well from the rook. Or if I wanted to go up here and sacrifice my bishop, he could take that because it looks more enticing because it's a bishop. And then I take his queen anyway. But... I decide I'm just going to do it with, well, oops, first it was his turn. <laughs> so he's just getting more support on his horse and, you know, more combat, more whatever. But I end up going with this guy first because if I use my bishop and he doesn't bite, my bishop is doing nothing. And I'm like, well, that sucks. So I want to use the pawn so that if he doesn't take it, then I still have something to do. I can still mess up his structures and get all up in his face about it. So... That's why I chose that. I actually didn't even think about this C pawn during the game. I only see that now that I could have used this instead, um, which might have been a really good play. If I had saw that, I probably would have done that instead. Um, since he's on the queen side, just move all my queen pawns. But he obviously doesn't bite. He just moves over anyway. And I'm thinking, okay, so he's attacking over here, which is fine. So, it, you know, whatever. I don't really care about these guys. They're just there as, you know, essentially fresh meat. So, I have a couple options. If I take with the... Well, I can't take with the bishop. If I take with the rook, I'm attacking his queen, but he's still got this pawn here. 
And if I take with the pawn, it leaves some pieces free, except the fact that I'm still after his horse with this guy, so he still has to respond to that first, which he does by moving away, which is perfectly fine by me. And now I've really got some options. Um, he's really after this pawn now with the queen and the rook. And if I do want to take this piece, then... Um, you know, I don't think I saw this earlier. He wouldn't be able to take the bishop because it, it uh, pincers his king on in there. And then I'm really, you know, all after his grill. You know, which which free guy is he going to end up taking? So I wanted to defend it because I had such a big lead at the time. But I ended up just making a very sneaky play and pushing that one instead. Which it becomes free for the rook, which I was hoping he would take, which he does as bait because now it leaves his horse there so it was a very sneaky play of keeping this guy safe instead of just being taken defending this guy making a nice little chain of four ready to storm the castle and making a nice little trap over here i'm allowed to take his material for it put him in check so he must respond he moves over there you know it doesn't really matter where he moves and even more especially now i've really got this going um when you get multiple straight line attackers all on one clean line, they all they become exponentially stronger because they help each other. So that's really good. I'm still worried about moving because then these two bishops are you know in combat. So I'm trying to find a way to capitalize that on best as I can. Um, it'd be perfect if he could just flat out take my pawn with his, but he's not going to do it. Um, I could spend some time defending my own pawns, but I'm trying to think of more offensive ways I can go about things. What do I want to do? in order to win more effectively. So I decide to attack his queen, get him out of here, and then once you know he's got some pieces elsewhere doing absolutely nothing, then I'll worry about some easier defenses, things will be more simplistic, and uh, we'll go from there. But he decides to kind of go a little bit kamikaze. He doesn't really have anything going for him though, that's fine. If you want to spend turns taking a few of my pawns when I'm up by a bunch of pieces, that's fine. You're going to get nowhere with that. So. This allows me to take a free piece of his own, which is what I'm going to do with my rook. And now, you know, he's in a world of hurt. If I go here with my queen, then it's going to be game over in a couple of turns. And his only response to that would be to either take this pawn with his queen or defend over here. And then he can stall and just be a big trade, which would not be beneficial. He makes the right play, which at the time I didn't even see. So, you know, congratulations to him. But uh, it seems pretty obvious in hindsight now. So he makes the right play, which forces me to stall a little bit. And I'm thinking, well, do I want to go with here with my rook, and it will pin his bishop so he can't move his bishop, and then it will allow me to open up this file with my pawn, and then I'll be able to take his bishop anyway with it being defended by mine, putting him in check, attacking his queen, doing all sorts of havoc. Or I could put my rook all the way on the back file, and then... I'll be able to move my queen over to here, push his king out, and then, you know, who knows what I can do with a king all out in the open like that and, you know, make all sorts of damage. But I decide that pinning it is probably the safer bet because I don't want to fiddle around with having my queen kind of stuck, even if he is out in the open and eh, messing up my nice little defense. Um, for a while, I wanted to get my or my pawn up there and promoted, but I'm not going to deal with it just yet. So. He's starting to power up his guys by stacking them, attacking at my king over here with a diagonal. But he doesn't really have time to worry about that, as I'm just going to go through with my plan, push that. His bishop can't do anything about it, and his response is to keep the offense up and attack this thing. If he gets his queen on this square, I lose the game, but I'm not going to give him the time to do that. I'm just going to move my rook over like I originally planned the whole time. King can't move here, king can't move here, king can't take it, king can't move there, he can't take my rook, and ladies and gentlemen, that is called checkmate. So, thanks for watching, I'm sorry about the technical difficulties, um, I had some really good live narration I believe, but uh, I think I did a pretty good job afterwards too. So, thanks for watching guys, stay tuned for more, I'll be sure to catch you later, peace.